Salam and welcome to Kyrgyzstan, a country which is defined by its mountains. This is why in this episode we are focusing on outdoor adventures, we check out the local life and we're gonna taste the local cuisine. But first I'm gonna show you how these things are made. Kyrgyzstan is a landlocked country in Central Asia, also geographically isolated by its highly mountainous terrain which has helped preserve its ancient culture, Kyrgyzstan has been at the crossroads of several great civilizations as part of the Silk Road and other commercial and cultural routes. The country has periodically fallen under foreign domination and attained sovereignty as a nation state only after the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991. We're now in the village of Khrysel where we get shown how they built a yurt or Bosui. This is the name of a yurt here in Kyrgyzstan. So guys, if you want to buy one, one and a half thousand dollars. So if you're wondering, the record in building these is at nine minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, let's see the inside. Whoa. And back to the yurt camp where I can actually show you how these bozuis look from the inside when they are finished. So the bottom layer are carpets and here you have the mattresses. Simple but comfy. Do you recognize this pattern? Yes, it is what you can see in the flag of Kyrgyzstan. Isn't that mind-blowing? Of course, these yurts are just for sleeping. Uh, you have other facilities here, such as like the washing room and the showers here. So here you shower, more or less outside. And then of course, there is the big dining tent where you get to eat. I made it to the summer spot in Kyrgyzstan called the Isik Cool Lake, meaning the warm lake. And this is because it never freezes in the winter, despite the fact that it gets its water from all these snow capped mountains in the back. Because it is a saline lake, and it's the second largest saline lake in the world after the Caspian Sea. And as you can see, in summer, this is the spot where the locals hang out, where they go swimming, because this is basically their ocean. We start this outdoor adventure here in Kyrgyzstan in a real Kyrgyz way on a horse with a horse track. Now the horses take a well deserved break while we can enjoy a view to the Isik Cool Lake. What you see here is a true nomad camp. This is where people live, they have their horses here, they have goats and cows over there. Just slaughtered a goat right there and this is the lifestyle that people used to have here in Kyrgyzstan. They were actually mountain nomads. As I said, 80% of the country are mountains so they packed up their camp and set it up in the next valley whenever they wanted or they had to. Welcome to Karakol, a city which was founded by the Russians as a strategic location to explore everything which is southeast of Karakol. Today, it's a strategic location for all outdoor lovers because of its proximity to the highest mountains of the country. It's time to introduce you to the food of Kyrgyzstan and for this we're here in Karakol at the market I'm here with Rachat and we're doing a little food tour here. So we have five stops yes. and we're starting here at the market with... With Ashlan food. With Ashlan food. Okay, let's try it. So what we have here is a cold soup and it's basically the dish of the Dangan people, like the Chinese Muslim people who live here in Karakol. Mm. It also tastes a lot like garlic. 
Next is, ah, you guessed it, dumplings. You can have them in many different versions. And here we have a vegetarian one. Next is Lakman. There's also uh, several versions of this uh, Kyrgyz style pasta. This is actually an Uyghur dish. It's called Bosso Lakman. It's fried Lakman with beef. Mmm, very good. Fried stuff, always good stuff. Next is a Tatar dish called Asso, which is basically <laughs> French fries, meat, pickles, cucumbers, onion, and again, garlic. <laughs> I'm so full already. <laughs> the next dish is Oromo, which is a roll with carrots and onions. Fifth stop is the fat cat. And this is also how I feel like. We have our dessert here, a chocolate cake and some iced latte. And so it begins to warm up for the multi-day trek which lays ahead. I'm doing a one-day trek here with Milan. It's called the Jogolot trek because of the village down there it's named Jogolot. So it's a four-hour trek, six kilometers. Should be a nice warm-up program. Pass. This is where we are going, the Karabeltek. So let's take on the last two kilometers. You know the thing with hiking for me is... That I always need a good view to make it worth it. And with the panorama here, I would say mission accomplished. So we finished the trek on Mai Chung Kur on 2500 meters. Down there is Karakur. And over there is the ski resort. And the Mount Karakur, the glacier. 5200 meters high. So last chapter of the food experience is a dinner in the Dungan family. Um, it's just a few dishes. <laughs> I think we won't leave hungry here. As you see, the Kyrgyz cuisine is really high on carbs. But it doesn't really matter because you can do all these hikes, so you don't need to feel guilty afterwards. After all this warming up, it's now finally time to go on the three-day multi-day trek I told you about. Uh, this goes from Bos Ulchuk to Yegalan. And we're now preparing everything, packing up. And with me on this trek is my guide, Danja. Oh. So what is the program for the first day? So today we will walk around 14 kilometers. So we start from the Bozuchuk village and now we go to the uh, close to the pass Bozuchuk Lashu. Alright, so we have an elevation gain of about 1200 meters on the track and we start pretty in a pretty nice surrounding. You see that? In this beautiful surrounding we're gonna have lunch and as I told you they already prepared tea here. It's a very interesting way. We made it to the first campsite. Up there is the lake we're now set up. We will head up to see the lake and meanwhile Food is getting prepared here in this tent. There's even a second lake, a little bit higher up. So we're now approximately on 3,600 meters. And it was totally worth the climb, I would say. It's dinner time. Ooh, hello party tent. Hello, hello. For dinner we have lakman, vegetables and beef. And look at the rest. What a feast. A camping feast. After seeing these glorious lakes yesterday, it's now time for the second day. Today we have 16 kilometers ahead. We go up to a pass and then down to a valley and up to another pass and then we camp. 
And we made it over the first pass, 3,360 meters. Now it's on to the valley. We are almost down and you can already see what's waiting for us in the afternoon. We will make our way up here over that pass. So, it's time to tackle that 700 meter ascent uphill now. We're making good progress. We're more than halfway up. All the joys of hiking. It's through the wet plants and then it's pouring down. Not lucky today, not lucky. Pass, almost there. So, I made it to the top and I'm totally soaked. Oh my god. Uh, there were the plants, they were like knee high and there were also stones hidden underneath the plants so you need to be really careful to not twist your ankle or something. But anyway, now I'm up here. 3,000, I guess 400 meters. But I can't see my guide or the porters. And I hope my guides are really down there. Otherwise, I guess I need to follow the river to the, to the to a village or something. Or I need to find a horse. Look at this beautiful valley. There in the back are some glaciers, some really high mountains. And I haven't found my guide yet, but I saw a tent pitch over there. I arrived at camp and the sun came out. And now it's time to dry all this stuff. Everybody got wetty on this track. But look at this view of the campsite. Isn't that amazing? What a beautiful campsite. Now we start day three and we will go back to which village? Jilgalan. We'll go to Jilgalan village, which is about 14 to 16 kilometers. We're all wet, but it's the last day. So I'm looking forward to a hot shower. <laughs> so I think actually that rain yesterday was planned so that my shoes are already wet and that I don't care crossing rivers like that with my shoes. And it's actually more safe to cross the rivers having the shoes on because without shoes you can easily slide and hurt yourself. And there is our destination Jegalan, the most eastern village of Kyrgyzstan. Oy! Now that I got a fresh shower, look who I met. You should check out his channel too. He's also doing Kyrgyzstan vlogs here. And what are we what are we up to now <laughs> after so trek? We've been like living the healthy life, trekking and drinking water and tea and eating and now we're getting into that Coca-Cola <laughs> and candy. We tried to find beer, but Coca-Cola was the next best thing. And this is it from Kyrgyzstan. If you're keen to visit this beautiful destination as well, make sure to check out my related travel guide. If you like this video as always, feel free to comment on it, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new travel videos every Thursday. See you soon. <laughs>